All right, hello everyone. I'm Pavna Thur, founder of Shinomics.com, a platform to help women create extraordinary impact in their life and career. Today, we're really, I'm really excited to be talking to Avni Parekh, who is a serial social entrepreneur, startup enthusiast, and sexual hacktivist. Um, and she recently launched LoveDoctor.in, which is a confidential service for women, by women, to get information and advice about sex, sexual health, and relationships. Welcome, Avni. So happy to have you join us. Thanks, Bhavna. Happy to be with you today. Oh, awesome. So let's dig right in. Um, tell me about Love Doctor. What is Love Doctor? So Love Doctor is a platform um, for people to ask questions about sex, sexual health, and relationships. And the, the goal is really to create a space for somebody to talk about a taboo topic, which they may not actually have a place to go and speak about with anyone else. Um, and, you know, one of the things that I found just, um, I've been in like a pilot phase, is that so many people just have really basic questions about sex and relationships. And so they're using the service to explore those questions and get to know themselves and their bodies a little bit better. That's excellent. That's excellent. So what made you create a service like this? Um, there are several reasons. So one is, is that um, I was living in India in 2012 and I saw the, the, you know, the, the big shift that occurred after the attention that the Delhi gang rape got. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I was noticing is that probably for the first time in many years, it seemed like people were really ready to have a public discourse about, you know, women's safety and, um, you know, patriarchal society and sexual violence. And what I saw missing was a larger conversation about, you know, the elements that it really takes to have a healthy intimacy in general, um, you know, whether, uh, you know, even if it's consensual, and as well as sort of a conversation around, um, you know, relationships and healthy relationships and relationship role models and whatnot. There are a lot of theories flying around as to why, you know, Delhi was becoming the rape capital of the world and whatnot. And a lot of those things pointed to things like media and, you know, Bollywood sort of spreading its influence. And some people even said it was a Western influence. But for me, the important thing was is that those conversations were starting and I wanted to extend them and help create more safe spaces to have conversations like that. That's awesome. That's awesome. And like you said, these are such important conversations, but often women don't know where to go to have yeah. those conversations. So I think in that respect, a service like this is very valuable. Yeah. Um, I'd love to hear a little bit about your own personal and professional journey that led you to this point, because I know, I'm sure that has a lot to do with starting the service. So tell me a little bit about that. I think uh, I'm like one of those typical people that had a had a point in their life where they knew that they were going to do something that's going to make the world a better place, right? So I've always been one of those saving baby seals, sort of bleeding hearts that really wanted to, to, to help people. Um, and I think something that was really significant for me is, um, you know, there was a point in time in which um, I was with a group of my girlfriends in college. And I, there were about six of us there. And I, I looked at us, and it was just such a weird out-of-body experience. I literally went out of my body and had this conversation with myself. Um, and almost every other one of my friends, you know, if you lined us up, had had some sort of adverse incident um, in their past, either with relationships or they were sexually abused as children or um, they were, you know, had some, some element of violence in the home or they were in a relationship that was unhealthy or just, you know, had lots of unhealthy elements around it. And I thought to myself, you know, this is, this is out of control and um, I want to do something about this, right? I, I think that I'm going to spend, at, at that moment I had the clarity, I think I was probably about 19 years old, that I'll, I'm going to spend a big part of my life trying to fight this and, and make that better, that you know, we should be getting into healthy relationships, that sex should be consensual, it should be, it should be intimate, it should be personal, it should be, you know, fulfilling. Um, and I didn't know it at the time. I didn't know that I would make true in my promise, but I feel like that's what I'm doing today. Awesome. That's so great to hear. 
So speaking of relationships, what kinds of questions are you getting from the women that are using your service? Oh, wow. So I actually, you know, one interesting thing is, is that I have both women and men coming um, to Love Doctor now. And I chose to actually not turn anyone away because um, one of the things I realized is that the safe space was important for, for people of, you know, all genders, all sexual identities. And I think the most common question is, you know, how do I find a relationship? Right. So and and I see some of the energy behind that really being that people feel like they're incomplete without another. And um, and that 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 uh, image is almost forced on them now, you know, in in things in popular media and popular culture is that, you know, you're not cool if you don't have a boyfriend, girlfriend or significant other and that love is like the cool thing to do and it's a milestone it's something that it's something to be achieved right it's something to be checked off the list and people are really longing for somebody outside of themselves to fill this hole um and and so many of the people that that approach the service you know even though we're just in a pilot phase and we're we're going to be launching an app in February, even just in this pilot phase, I can sense that, um, you know, the love that's even there when people are talking about relationships that they want to have, these are people that they don't even know. So they're, they're seeing somebody, you know, from far away and imagining this person to be perfect and, you know, without any flaws and attributing to them everything that they want in a companion and falling in love with them when in reality it's actually just lust, right? right? So this is something that can fade away. They don't have a basis to actually keep and hold a relationship there or the basis or the role models to teach them about compromise. And so, you know, they're falling in love with a, with a, a mirage, mm. essentially. a beautiful mirage. And so they want to move forward and they want to have a relationship and they want to do this and that. And they just want a magic formula to make it all happen. And, right. um, right. It's a, it's a gentle conversation that we have about asking them how they feel and what they'd like to say and combine that with, with fear of rejection and you have a, a hodgepodge of feelings and many people who just feel like they're not good enough, you know, mm -hmm. that they themselves are not good enough to have that love that they want. It's interesting how you just talked about how many people are essentially really just looking to fill that hole inside of them and I know you and I have had conversations about this before and you and you've talked about how um, even before you can hope to have a healthy relationship with someone else you have to first begin with having that relationship with yourself and I know you wanted to talk about how can one begin doing that um, so um, talk to me about that so what are I know you have five steps that you're going to yeah. lay out for us for how we can begin doing that. So what, what's, what's step number one? So I think the, the first thing that I want to talk about is, and you know, many of these blend into each other. So it may sound like I'm saying the same thing, but um, essentially that, you know, if you want to even have a relationship with somebody else, the first step is to have a good relationship with yourself, right? So that's step one is just that realization that you are only as good in a relationship as you are to yourself. Right. And so you really need to understand that to have a lasting and a very healthy relationship, even if it's not long lasting, but to have a healthy relationship, you have to have a really healthy relationship with yourself first. Right. Like I think, um, you know, I always think about that quote by Gloria Steinem, like we are the ones that we've been waiting for, you know, uh, like there's nobody that's going to come into your life and that's going to complete you. I think that's a myth. We, we, come, we come whole into any situation and we learn with somebody and grow with somebody. But if you yourself are not, don't feel like you're whole, then it's something to work on before you bring somebody else into the equation. Mm -hmm. oh. So step one is simply that awareness that it does begin with us. Yeah. Um, so what, what, what's step two? I think the second thing is then just beginning to accept yourself as you are, right? So... Um, I went through a really long process where I realized, you know, this is just my, you know, my own story is that, you know, um, I'm looking for somebody else to, to prop me up. Right. So like if I'm a balloon, I'm waiting for somebody else to come and pump me up and inflate me so that I can float high in the sky and feel free. And, 
you know, sometimes that person that's inflating the balloon gets busy or doesn't know what to do or doesn't even know how to operate the pump or, you know, and so you're at the mercy of somebody in order to feel good. Um, and that becomes a vicious trap. And so if you can really learn to accept yourself and learn how to fly on your own and to give yourself those, um, you know, really they say sort of soothe yourself, give yourself those strokes, pat yourself on the back, you know, and call yourself out if you need to. Also tell yourself the truth. You know, don't walk around thinking that you're like, you know, God's gift because everyone here is a gift, right? Mm -hmm. okay. But um I think that honesty that, you know, everything in you is there for a reason and that, you know, if you can just have peace about it, then you can really free yourself and then you can think about being with another person. Mm. Yes. Self-acceptance, that's so, so important. Um, what, what's step three? Step three is, um, step three is just that there's no magic formula, right? You kind of just have to that's not even really a step. It's just sort of like a, a piece of advice. Know that through this process, there's no mantra, there's no journaling, there's no meditation technique that's going to take all of their doubts about yourself away, right? It may have to be a combination of things that you put together yourself based on trial and error that really began to shift the tide from you having a critical discourse with yourself to having a loving discourse with yourself. And um, certainly for me, it's been a lot of trial and error. I've, you know, used meditation, I've used writing, I've used journaling. Um, one thing that's really worked for me is just, you know, sort of positive reinforcement. Every time I, I, I catch myself um, being nice to myself, I would like find a way to give myself a treat, right? Or, you know, something like that. So there is no one thing that's going to make you love yourself. Um, and you just have to start bit by bit. And, you know, it starts with looking at yourself and not being critical, but also stopping those critical thoughts that you have um, and just realizing that you are whole no matter what. Mm. Absolutely. All right. Step four. Um, the fourth step is that friendship is really um, the key to all of this, right? So sometimes when I'm thinking about the healthiness of a relationship with a significant and other, I think about, I ask myself the question, would I be, fr would I be friends with this person? Would I accept these person's characteristics if they were in my best friend? Right? So that's a measure that you can use for another. I also say that that's a measure that you can use for yourself. Right? So one of the things that I, I keep hearing over and over again is about this idea of the law of attraction, right? And so we all sort of have a certain energy about us and that energy draws people to us, right? So if you're hurting, you may find other hurting people. If you're, if you're satisfied, you may find yourself more around people who are really satisfied with themselves and at peace. You would just tend to naturally, if you think about it, it makes logical sense. You would tend to gravitate to the spaces where those people are, right? So if you're hurting, you may find yourself in a support group with other hurting people. If you're at peace, you may find yourself, you know, at a, at a place of religious worship or, or doing community service or something like that. So that sort of makes sense. And I really think that like, when you can look at your life in this, in the sense of like friendship with yourself, you know, and asking yourself, okay, so I have X, Y, and Z quality about myself. Would I tolerate this in somebody else? And really being really honest with yourself about the answer. Like, would I be best friends with myself? Mm. You know, it's just a really good framework to get you thinking about if, if there really is something that you don't like about yourself, you know, then that means that you can't be friends with yourself. Mm. And how do you make the peace with that? Do you either accept it and move on like you would in maybe a best friend, you know? Maybe you have a best friend with a really um, quirky habit. Or, or do you begin to shift that so that it, it no longer becomes something that pains you? I mean, either way, the power is yours. And so, you know, the, the, the significance of friendship is putting this aspect of gentleness around it, right? Because friendship can never be forced. It's something that occurs naturally. I can't just like choose somebody in a crowd and say, oh, I want to be friends with her. You know, it has to occur very organically. And that's the same way that it has to occur with yourself. 
Absolutely. Build a relationship with yourself as if that person is, is, is if you're a friend. You have to have conversations, get to know yourself, uncover things about yourself, discover flaws about yourself, accept those flaws as if, as if you are a friend. Absolutely. And I, I think that also ties in with your previous point about not being too critical with yourself. So if you can be the best friend you can possibly be to yourself and show that compassion, because we would never be that critical with a friend, let's say. But we are, as, as women in particular, we are so self-critical. So, so beginning that friendship with yourself is, is the beginning of a lifelong romance, as they say. Um, so absolutely, a very yeah. valid point. Um, what, what's, what's, a, what's a final piece of advice? I think that, you know, we, there's so many similarities about us as human beings, right? So you can definitely look at a crowd and find a thread of connection between you and another person, but you and yourself, every single person has something that's really unique and beautiful about them, you know? And those definitions don't have to be traditional, right? So if we're talking about beauty, I'm not talking about, you know, this homogenized version of beauty that we see in magazines from day to day, but you may have a sparkle in your eye or you may have, you know, the best lips on the planet or you may have really beautiful skin or there just may be something about the way you walk that's very graceful. And even if it, you can only find that one thing, that one thing is yours, right? And that, that one thing that makes you beautiful or unique, you know, some aspect of your personality, something that you really like to do, a talent that you have, you know, everyone in this world is really good at something. Even if it's just, uh, even if it's just being good at, 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 at chilling, you know, there's some of us that can't relax. And I know so many people that think that they don't have something good about themselves, but they're actually really good at, at relaxing and not taking a lot of stress upon themselves. So even that can be a good thing. You can frame anything in a positive way. So it's to find those things that really make you, you, and to celebrate them, hold on to them and don't let anybody take that away from you, right? Yes. If somebody, if somebody, um, one of my really good friends said this to me, she said, you know what, Avni, you have certain gifts. And if, a, if somebody else, a friend or a partner, doesn't recognize those gifts or let those gifts shine, or if they tell you that they're not gifts, that person did not, does not need to be in your life. So, you know, that's like a, that's like a huge marker. I think that in so many unhealthy uh, relationships, including unhealthy relationships with yourself, you discount your own gifts that you have, right? Yeah. Be they what they may, whatever they are. So when you are able to really celebrate those things and own them and feel proud of them, whatever they are, then you really come into yourself, I think. That's a process I think of growing up. Absolutely. And, and if you do that, again, uh, bringing back your point, the point you mentioned earlier about um, looking for self-acceptance or looking for that acceptance elsewhere, if you keep reminding yourself of the things that are beautiful and unique about you and you accept yourself for, for who you are, there'll be less need to look for that validation or acceptance elsewhere. You come from a, such a more healthy place when you do that. Yes. So absolutely, that, that's a critical point. Well, thank you, Avni. These are all, I mean, each of the things you laid out, absolutely critical to building a better relationship with oneself, which, as you said, is the absolute foundation to set for yourself before you can build a relationship with somebody else. Um, I know you also have a call to action for everyone who's watching or listening to this. So what would you like to leave everyone with? So um, I'd actually love to have a conversation with you guys. So I'll also be joining in in the comment section. But I want everyone to write down three things that they really love about themselves in the comments. And let's start a, let's just have a dialogue with each other and just sort of celebrate the things about ourselves that we like. So I think everyone can come up with three things, you know. Um, and that's a good start to sort of keeping... Um, you know, you can even, beyond these three things, if you keep finding other things, keep a list and keep that list with you, you know, and read it every day. All of the things that you like about yourself, things that you've done, accomplishments, all of that stuff. It's good to keep that close to your heart. So I, I, I'm asking you guys for three. So please uh, share three with us and I'll also join in the discussion as well.
Excellent. And that is such a brilliant idea because research shows when you write things down, there is just so much power to doing that. So absolutely. So looking forward to hearing from everyone. We will definitely join in in the discussion section. Um, Avni, I'd like to thank you for joining us and for sharing all your thoughts and advice on relationships and wishing you all the best with lovedoctor.in. Keep us posted on how that progresses. Will do. Thanks so much for having me, Bob. It was a pleasure. Great. Thank you.